A great way to improve your foreign language speaking skills is to converse with native speakers. But what do you do when they keep switching to English? How can you practice if people never respond to you in the language you're trying to learn? This is a common complaint I hear from English speakers who travel to Paris or other big cities in France and naturally want to practice their French. The English speakers bust out their best French and the Parisians just aren't having it and switch to English at every chance they get. Has this happened to you or someone you know? Let's go over first why this happens and then what you could do as a language learner to stop it. All right, so first, bienvenue, I'm Diane. Welcome to We in France, where we talk about everyday French life and beyond. I'm an American who's lived in France since 2012, and I also blog over at weinfrance.com. So I'd love for you to check out my living abroad lifestyle blog. And also stick around to the end where I'll have my new segment of things I love. But let's get right into it. And first, this is a new design in my shop. It's a cool, mug. I love the bright pink that says en français s'il vous plaît. A reminder that's great for French teachers or just anyone who wants to remind people to speak French and it's perfect for today's topic. So let me put my mug down. All right, so there are two types of tourists who come to France in my opinion. One, those who can speak French at some level and are eager to practice that French with locals. And then two, those who don't speak French and are grateful when a French person knows a bit of English. Well, if you're in the first camp, maybe you can relate to this. Several days of your vacation go by and you become so fed up that all the Parisians are switching to English as soon as you get a few words out in French. And as frustrating as it could be, when French people switch to English, I promise they're not trying to annoy you. In fact, it's the opposite. You know, they're trying to help. They're not trying to purposely crush your language learning dreams or to be discouraging or rude, at least not 99% of the time anyway, right? So when I first moved to France to teach English in the Paris region, I had a low intermediate level of French and I had major trouble understanding French spoken in real time. I could read, I could write, and I could do that rather well, but oral comprehension was tough. <laughs> I shudder thinking about it. And I just always felt defeated if the person switched to English, like you're not cutting it yet, Diane. But you know, I really appreciated it because the first couple of years were not easy. And then as time went on and my level improved, I was on the other side of things. And I would get so annoyed if someone dared to switch to English on me, like, come on, dude, I'm here in France. I'm speaking your language. What's your deal, right? But then when I moved back to suburban France after getting married a couple of years later, it started happening less and less. And now I can probably count the number of times someone has switched to English on me um, over the past five or six years on one hand. And there are a few reasons for that. So there's several reasons why I feel the French switched to English. So let me give you my take on why that's happening and then after how you can get it to stop. So there are three main reasons why French people switch to English. One, their level of English surpasses your level of French, or at least they think it does. And I feel this is the main reason and it's nothing to take personally. So because of this, the conversation may be quicker and easier for everyone to understand for all parties involved if you stick to English. They assume they're helping you out by speaking your native language, not realizing that you want to actually practice French. And they might not have the patience or the time to engage in a conversation of broken French. Maybe they're on the way to work, right? And in a business transaction of some sort, like paying for a tour or out shopping, the French person is used to tourists not speaking French. So to be efficient and friendly, they cater to your native tongue if they can. Many times, even if you can make yourself understood, but it just takes a while, random people you run into, they don't always have time to wait or, you know, to kind of stick it out while you practice your French on them. Number two, the French want to practice their English with a native speaker, and then they do their best to keep that conversation in English. You know, it goes both ways. They want to practice their English, you want to practice your French just as much, and it's kind of a, you know, butting heads, right, about what language do you speak. And then number three, the most straightforward, they switch because they can. They want to show off their English skills, and even if you speak French rather well, Certain types of people will still want to bust out their English skills no matter what, even if it doesn't make sense in the situation. And I could give you a quick example of this. We went to a veterinary specialist in Paris one time when Dagny was young who had studied in the US. So it was a French doctor. And despite the fact that we were in France, that my husband was French and that I spoke French fluently, the doctor insisted on speaking to both of us in English once he found out I was American. So 
getting the message across and making sure you're understood is what's most important. And in that case, since we all spoke English, you know, we surrendered. It was understood by everyone in the room. So we just let him continue in English if that's what he wanted to do, even though it was a little weird. But in this case, the guy probably just didn't get many opportunities as a doctor to speak English at his veterinary practice. So we just went with it and he was happy to speak to us in English and my dog got great care. So it's fine. But that leads me to my next point. What is your goal with speaking French? So when this switching to English happens, consider this question. What's your goal in getting the French person to speak to you in French? Is it a need or is it a want? And I feel this is super important that you get your French up to speed ASAP because of a job or a move to France. If it is a need, if you're just a tourist visiting who's learning French for fun for a week, is it really a need? And if you need to be speaking French for a job, your studies or life in France, it's really important to have trusted French speakers in your life who know you a little bit and have a vested interest in your success. They're going to want to help you get your French up to snuff in the right context. So if people in everyday life switch to English on you, I think it's best to let it go. It's not the end of the world. If, in a, you know, a short interaction with a pharmacist um, switches to English as you improve, it'll stop. And if someone you speak to regularly switches to English, someone you care about and you want it to stop, I think it's worthwhile pointing out that it's really important to you that you speak French together. It's the only way you can improve. So explain that. And anyone who cares about you will do their best to honor your wishes. And I feel like some French people, they're happy to see English speakers, you know, and they just want to practice it too. So it's a balance and always consider the context. Are you trying to practice French with a busy waiter, a shopkeeper with a line out the door, or are you just striking up a conversation in a relaxed environment at a party or someone who is clearly showing interest and showing that they have the time to talk, right? Because you don't want to be rude either and interrupt people. All right. Here's how to keep that conversation flowing in French. One, get out of Paris and other big cities. I know it's not possible always if you have vacation plans that take you to the capital, but if you have the option to visit smaller cities outside of Paris, it'll be easier to keep the conversation in French because the truth is the majority of French people, especially in smaller towns do not speak English comfortably. So it's much easier to keep the conversation going in French because there is no other option. And that goes double for people over 40, 45, right? And of course that's a generalization. It's not true across the board. Yes. Some people speak English. They speak English really well, but in general, the further you get out of main cities, the less English you'll hear. Number two, improve your French. And let me be blunt about this because this is the truth. 99% of the time the switch happens because your French is not strong enough to carry that conversation. You know, think about it. If you speak French rather well, there's no need for a French person to switch to English on you. You know, um, how many people have you encountered in your life in the U S or wherever who are clearly foreign and speak with a foreign accent, but have no trouble communicating with you. It would be really weird for you to just assume, you know, their native tongue and then switch to that native tongue. And it might even be rude. And maybe you're thinking, well, Diane, how am I supposed to improve if people keep switching to English? Well, the random people who are switching to English when you're visiting Paris, they aren't the ones who are going to make any market improvement uh, in your French, you know, putting in this time with your language partner, your French teacher, uh, grammar books, watching French TV shows. Lupin is really good by the way with Omar Sy and then repeat what you hear. Um, all of that is going to help you improve, you know? So next time you visit France, you'll be more competent. People won't switch to English on you because it's easier. Put in the time where it matters and let these little fleeting interactions with busy Parisians go if they switch. All right. Next, if you have a conversation partner and you have the time politely ask to continue in French and some people won't, but go ahead and ask, try to keep that conversation in French or offer to do an exchange where 10 minutes in English, 10 minutes in French. And then lastly, if you can keep the level of conversation going, refuse to give in and do not bluff here. I can't stress that enough. If you legit can't converse well in French, do not refuse to give in if it's to save face. So, for example, if it would be rude in the context of the situation, let the French person switch to English. If it's easier, like a busy waiter at a restaurant who just wants to get your order correct and just wants to get it in and, and get you your food in a timely manner. You know, don't insist on sticking with French. If you legit can't speak French well. Now, if your French isn't bad, if the context is right, if you have someone open to speaking French with you, just keep speaking French. Even if the person continues to reply in English, they'll get your point, you know, after a couple back and forths. And if it's a hindrance to your conversation and your level of French is well below their level of English, 
then you may have to give in and just let them speak English to you. It's fine. You know, pick your battles with that. All right, next one's a little contentious, but pretend you don't understand English at all, or at least not their accent in English. Really, use this one with caution. This is for people who are being rude. Don't do this with a nice person. You've been warned. Um, only use this if you're desperate, right? And it's for when you can clearly communicate in French just fine, and the other person will not let up with the switching to English. So if you know you can hold your own in French, and they're being rude, switching to English, making snide comments, it's totally up to you if you want to step it up a notch. I've used this once, okay? So that says how uh, discerning you need to be. So when someone says something to you in English, just stare back and blink and be like, huh, comment? Désolé, je ne comprends pas. And, you know, continue along in French as if you couldn't understand their accent. Yeah, this is being rude back. I don't recommend it, but sometimes it's needed, like the one time eight years ago, right? Just pretend you don't understand English, period, right? Not just their accent, but English in general. You could try that. But be careful, because they might ask where you're from. So if you say, oh, je suis russe, uh, je suis allemand, you know, you're Russian, you're German, you know? What if they actually speak that language? Then you're kind of screwed, right? So then you look silly for lying. So use that with caution. Um, and just a few things, uh, I said this before, just a few things about my advice. Um, pick your battles. If you need a quick answer and someone is rushing at work, trying to wrangle a screaming child in their stroller, you know, don't push to keep the conversation in French. It's not about you. Um, it's important to get your way in every circumstance. No, it's not. No, it definitely is not. And you could always find a new conversation partner and people uh, who want to learn English just as much as you want to learn French. And you don't need to monopolize the conversation, you know? Um, there are loads of people out there who would love to have an exchange. So just pick your battles, pick your context. I know it's funny sometimes, you know, you're in France, you're like, I want to speak French and you're fired up and it doesn't go as planned. So just pick your battles. And Always be polite, always. First and foremost, you're the foreigner. You are the foreigner and first impressions matter here. It's really not worth it to get the last word or get fired up over something that really won't matter in five minutes. And that's really all I wanted to say here. So just wanted to give you some insight into why French people switch to English and what you could do. I would love to hear if this has ever happened to you, how you've battled it. Um, and if you've noticed like me that as your French improves, there is no reason for French people to speak to English because you can hold your own. And lastly, as your accent improves, French speakers won't be able to pinpoint exactly where you're from uh, just by the way you speak. So they can guess that maybe you speak English, but a lot of times maybe they don't know where you're from at all. So it'd be kind of silly for them just to speak uh, English to you if they have no clue where you're from and you're clearly holding your own. So I hope that motivates you to get better at French or at least maybe shine some light on why these things happen. Um, and don't worry, you're not alone. As we all start at the beginning, we start from zero. It's a learning process and you kind of check these things off your list. You're like, yep, went to Paris, everyone switched to English. Oh well, better luck next time. It's a rite of passage. So take it in stride, laugh about it. I've certainly laughed about it probably 99% of the time, except for that one rude experience. And it's always when people are being rude to you, if you know you're coming at it from a place of honest, wanting to learn and coming at it from your heart and you're not being rude and you're doing everything you can to just put yourself out there. If someone's being rude to you in return, that's always about them, not about you. So just know that, know you're doing fine, keep at it. And um, yeah, let's move into my things I love. Okay, and now for my new segment called Things I Love. It's something I'm trying out at the end of my videos where I talk to you about something I love. Straightforward, right? Sometimes it has something to do with France, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, my first episode, I did uh, three small businesses that I supported over the holidays. Uh, last time I did blogs that I love, and today I have a book and a podcast pick for you. I have a book here, it's called Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb. It's a New York Times bestseller, and it takes a look at a prominent LA therapist who's, quite frankly, her own life is falling apart. Through her very candid, um, but sometimes humorous writing, you'll get a look at her patients as well as her own life, and I think even if you're not going through the same thing that she or her patients are going through, you could still relate to it because she draws on so many parts of the human experience, uh, grief, loss, depression, anxiety, um, you you know, career struggles and that sort of thing. And I just thought it was a really, really well done book. And it's not a short book, but the pages fly. And her writing style is super engaging. It'll keep you turning the pages. Um, and basically, uh, I could just tell you, 
from the back, uh, it says, taking place over one year and beginning with the devastating event that lands her in her own therapist's office, the book offers a rare and candid insight into a profession that's conventionally bound with rules and secrecy, therapy. So told with charm and compassion, vulnerability and humor, it's also the story of an incredible relationship between two therapists and disarmingly funny and illuminating. So yeah, um, I highly recommend, maybe you should talk to someone, check it out. I buy most of my books used, so don't worry about spending a ton of money. Um, and I'll link that down below. Next up is my podcast pick. And truth be told, I have this terrible, yeah, it's terrible because I listen to true crime podcasts before I go to bed. And when you're listening to true crime about murder and all this, I don't know, terrible stuff, you get crazy dreams. So I was trying to kind of branch out um, and something that I found that was amazing, I guess technically still in true crime, but is not murder, um, is American Coyote. And it's a podcast that focuses on a man named Eldon Kidd, an American who was a self-proclaimed people smuggler who helped migrants illegally cross over the border from South America, Central America, and even China into the USA. So wait, 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 just put aside the ethics and the morality of that, whatever you feel uh, politically about someone people smuggling, um, and focus on the fact that this is a podcast that is a dramatic, really exciting story. It's expertly told with Eldon himself being interviewed, and there's a lot of twists and turns and unexpected moments, and I felt it was expertly produced and is a nice change if you have a little problem with true crime and the murder is affecting how you sleep. So listen to American Coyote. Uh, it's probably one of the best podcasts I've listened to over the past couple of months will really keep you listening till the end. I believe it's 10 parts and I'd love to hear below some of the podcasts that you listen to that you love. I have a bunch, but that's my recommendation for today. And as always, thank you so much for being here. Um, I do have a line of merch as I always point out and try to wear a piece or show something um, from my shop. That's a way to keep my content free for you, the viewer. So if you like anything, um, I really appreciate your support. Also, I have a newsletter. Uh, it's free and you get a PDF of do's and don'ts for when you come to France. Uh, so sign up for that below. And uh, as always, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for engaging with me in the comments. And I'll catch you right back here soon on We in France. Salut!